There's a new one. What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here. We're gonna be taking a look at the latest uh, improvement to the Oculus family, this being the Oculus Rift S. So there's two improvements already to the Oculus Rift S that I'm excited to take a look at. And you might notice there are no sensors in this because this uses inside out tracking or basically the headset is tracking its own movement and communicating that back to the computer. But I use virtual reality for the immersion in realism when it comes to simulators being either flying or driving. Mostly driving, but flying is something I've enjoyed doing as well. Now the original unit was using an OLED pen tile, uh, which was 1080 by 1200 resolution in a portrait mode per eye. This is actually using an RGB LCD and it has a resolution of 1280 by 1400. So we've got a greater resolution and a different display type. That coupled with the uh, lens improvements means, like I said, less God rays and hopefully less screen door effect. You've got cameras on the front, on the sides, and on the top. And that is so that while you're wearing this, it can track it wherever it goes. Because again, the headset is responsible for all of the tracking now, not only of the HMD itself, but the hand controls. Now the Oculus Rift connected to your computer via HDMI cable and a USB 3.0. This is very, very similar. Although now because of the higher resolution, we are using a full size display port and USB 3.0. And these are the only connections. These are the only connections. You don't have to go to any sort of breakout box. You don't have to go to any sort of cameras. Oh, and check this out. If you don't have a full size, or if you don't have a full size uh, display port adapter on your laptop or your computer or your graphics card, they do include a mini display port adapter. So that's kind of nice to see. So while the Oculus software is downloading for first time setup, I want to talk about how the fitment of this kind of works. So you have a single Velcro strap on the top, which supports the weight, obviously. And then you have a knob on the back, which supports or adjusts the inside out. So as you can see, you could have a pretty big head and still fit this. Like Phil might even be able to actually wear this, but I digress. The actual padding on here feels very thick. It feels very much like a memory foam. The fabric is very soft. It's not coarse like some of the, you know, if you wear an HMD that has kind of a coarse padding on there, it starts to feel scratchy and itchy over time. So if you're not using headphones with this, these are the speakers right here. They're right above your ears. So they're gonna downfire right to your ear. Um, but again, like I said, you're not isolated from the ambient environment. So you, if you're playing like some sort of a scary game or some sort of a, a horror game, like let's say chair in a room or something like that, which is very ambient based where it's a, the ambience is just as scary as the game itself, then you would lose some of that effect by being able to hear the ambient sounds around you. So I would recommend probably using headphones with this or at least try it and see what you prefer. Uh, but for today's testing, we're just gonna be using, uh, I think straight up speakers. Whoa. Okay, ooh. Hi, Phil. So I can go here, look, check out my boat. See, that's my boat. That's great. Ooh. Okay, get down into there. Okay, the tracking on this is really actually good. The sound is, is a little lacking, as you'd expect, given the speaker size. So I would certainly recommend your own headphones, which at least plug right into the side. My hands are on the wrong hands. <laughs> I wanna hit that balloon. It's extremely obvious that there is a, uh, a resolution increase. Okay. Could you imagine a VR experience where you could like hold and play with like the latest in like GPU tech and all that? You'd just be like, wow, so this is a 2080 Ti. So PC build simulator, but in VR. Yeah, that, that would be so cool. Uh. <laughs> Does it always do that? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh God, oh God. Uh... <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this right now, like flying in VR, it'll ruin you. You'll never go back to a panel again, ever. Because you know what you can't do with a panel? <laughs> you, you can't do that. Um, sure, there, were, there was tracking stuff that you could buy back in the day, but what you also don't get with panels is sense of depth. You just, you don't get depth. And so, I mean, I'm turning right now. I can see, I can see my relative position to the runway. See that? I, I, you just, you can't do that with panels. Okay, I'm gonna try something. I would never try this with a screen. What? I didn't <laughs> even touch it. 
<laughs> I didn't mean to do that. So after spending uh, the last couple hours playing around on this, I can, t I can tell you for sure that the resolution is definitely sharper. Um, that alone was one of the quickest ways to take yourself out of the immersion effect in VR is trying to read text. If you're sitting there flying an aircraft like we were just doing, or you're doing a Seto Corsa iRacing or Project Cars like I typically do, reading the dash and, and the gauges, or if you're driving a GT3 car, trying to read any of the digital display was near impossible because it was just too pixelated. And the closer you got to it, the more pixelated it sort of appeared. Um, you made it bigger, but of course you could still see all the jaggy edges and stuff and the screen door effect was really, really bad. Now, although we only stepped up from 1080 by 1200 to 1280 by 1440, we saw a massive difference in terms of sharpness and uh, with text. Now, Phil tried this out for a bit too, and he just, the first thing he said was like, oh my God, I can read the text. That's the first, the first thing to tell, uh, to tell you that the resolution on this is extremely, uh, well, it's not even extremely higher. It's just, it's perceived that way. The lenses. Yeah, it's definitely the lenses. Flying around and in in, in seeing the sun out of the corner of your eye didn't cause a glare across all of the lenses. The headset's definitely lightweight. Um, it, after about an hour of me wearing it and screwing around as you guys saw and doing the setup and doing the flight sim and playing around, uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel any sort of neck fatigue. And I think part of that is because of the angle they have this sitting on your head now. I kind of wish that there was a clip on the back as well for the cable. One of the things I noticed when I was moving around was that this hanging off to the side of me with the PC being off to my front left was kind of a problem. I and this is just a little clip doohickey they have sitting right here on the, on the strap. I feel like they should have added another one back here. That way you could just sort of get it out of the way and keep it behind you. That's not, that's not even something that you couldn't make yourself. It just would have been nice to have it included. The controllers are nice. They, uh, they have the same basic functionality as the originals, but the first thing I did when I put it on is I had them kind of going the wrong way. The hoop is in a completely different location from the original uh, Oculus Rift. So this is about the, being a more optimal view for the cameras and the tracking of the HMD rather than comfort. Yeah, what else is there to say? I mean, inside out tracking is, is definitely gonna be a step forward because one of the things that made it just cumbersome and kind of a put off to new people when it comes to VR, although it's becoming a lot more affordable, was the setup. And the setup on this was extremely simple. Plugged in the headset uh, display port cable, plugged in the USB and downloaded the Oculus Home software and it guides you 100% from start to finish. So that's kind of the name of the game here was ease of use, but not only ease of use, there was obviously an evolutionary upgrade in terms of lens quality, the display. And although we went from an OLED to an LCD, I didn't notice any difference in terms of blotchy blacks or anything like that. Um, there was no sort of ghosting when you moved your head. The frame rate, although we went from 90 down to 80, didn't, I, I didn't notice it, to be honest. As long as you can keep a consistent frame rate, then the 80 hertz is obviously not gonna be a problem. Another thing I would have loved to have seen though would have been the retention of the actual headset built in. But I think it makes sense as to why they did that. I, I think that Oculus knows that a lot of people would prefer to use their own headset. So they give you, like I showed out earlier, or showed you earlier, a plug on the side of the HMD so you can use your own and you have a built-in ambient speaker system, which gets the job done if you just wanna go in there and kind of mess around, you don't have to worry about um, you know, plugging in headphones and all that sort of stuff. So that's it, guys. That's our look here at the Oculus Rift S, a definite improvement over the standard Oculus Rift and one that I, I'm gonna have to go now and go home and set this up because I cannot wait to test this out with Project Cars. So are you guys into VR? If so, what headsets do you guys like to use and what games do you recommend that we try out? Because VR gaming, like I guess I'm probably gonna lose this unit to my daughter. My daughter is obsessed with VR. She nags me about it every single day, constantly wanting to play. She likes to play games, like I said, um, Job Simulator, Baby Hands, and all that sort of stuff. So, all right guys, I'm gonna let you go. Tell me what you think down in the comments below, and as always, we will see you in the next one.